Okay, guys, uh, welcome to your 4.9 lesson today. I'm in the building, but I am not in a classroom. I'm an administrator for the day, so I'll be up in the office. I'll be walking through classes and stuff like that. So I may see you, but I'm not here to actually do the lesson with you. Your first task this morning or this afternoon is to find your spiral, open up your spiral, and your warm-up is 4.9 warm-up. There are four questions. It says, find the number of solutions for each equation. If the equation has only one solution, find the solution. So we're going to do these four problems. And we notice that every single one has the same variable on both sides of the equal sign. So sometimes we're going to have one solution. Sometimes we're going to have infinite solutions. Sometimes we're going to have no solution. So if I look at number one, I've got 3x plus 12 on the left side of the equal sign. I've got 6x minus 18 on the right side. Now, you're going to, by the end of this class, you're going to know whether or not it's a one solution before you even start. Because if you look at the numbers in front of the x's, if they are not the same, then it has to be one solution. So this linear term, so the 3x and the 6x, if these linear terms are the same, then you know that it cannot be one solution. It could be either infinite solutions or no solutions. However, if these are different, then it has to be one solution because the X's on both sides of the equal sign are not going to cancel out. So since I have more X's on the right side of the equal sign compared to the left, I'm going to subtract 3X from both sides. So then I'm left with on the left side, I'm left with 12 equals 3X minus 18. And my goal is to get the x by itself, so I'm going to add 18. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. So I have 30 equals 3x. I'm going to run out of room, but I'm going to try to sneak it in there. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So the first one, x does have a solution, and that solution is 10. So for the first problem, x equals 10. For number two, before I can even compare the left side to the right side, I have to do distributive property on the right side of the equal sign. So I'm going to rewrite the left side is already done, 6x minus 30. The right side is 6 times x, which is 6x, and 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. Now what you should see immediately is you say, wait, the left side is identical to the right side. And so if the left side is identical to the right side, so the linear terms are the same, they're both 6x, and the constants are the same, they're both negative 30. So everything's identical. So if everything is identical, then it is infinite solutions. That means it doesn't matter what the value of x is. The left side of the equation is going to equal the right side of the equation because they're identical. So you have infinite solutions. Same thing on number three. We need to do distributive property first. So 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times 3 is 6. So the left side is 8x plus 6. The right side is 8x plus 5. So they are not identical. The linear terms are identical. I have 8x on the left. I have 8x on the right. But the constants are not the same. I have 6 on the left. I have 5 on the right. So since the linear terms are identical, but the constant terms are not identical, then this is going to be a no solution. I'm going to show you why it's a no solution. So if I have 8x, this is number 3. If I have 8x plus 6 on the left and 8x plus 5 on the right, and now you say, well, I have the same amount of x's on both sides, so it really doesn't matter if you want to get the x's to the left or to the right. Since they're the same, they're going to cancel out. But let's get rid of the ones from the left. So let's subtract 8x from both sides. So if I subtract 8x from both sides, 8x minus 8x cancels out. So the only thing left on the left side of the equal sign is a positive 6. And then you go to the right side, 8x minus 8x, that also cancels out. So the only thing you have left on the right side is 5. 
And so you say, well, when does six equal five? Well, six never equals five. So I put a little slash through the equal sign. Six never equals five. That's why it's no solution. For number four, I'm going to get my distributive property on the left side. So let me write the, or on the right side. So I'm going to write the left side is 15x plus 5. And then when I write the right side after doing distributive property, I have 5x because 5 times x is 5x and 5 plus 3 is 15. Okay, so I already know it's going to be one solution. Now I just have to solve for x. I know it's one solution because the x's, the linear terms, are not the same. I have 15 on the left. I have 5 on the right for my x's. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. When I do that, I have 10x plus 5 equals, this will cancel out 15. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I have 10x, the 5s cancel out, equals 15 minus 5 is 10. And then to get rid of the 10, I divide by 10, so x equals 1. So my number 4, I have one solution, it is x equals 1. Make sure all of that goes in your spiral. Make sure you got the title, warm up, 4.9, you have those four problems. For the two where we had one solution, we had to solve it. X is 10 for number one. X is one for number four. For the ones where we had infinite or no solutions, you're just identifying which one is which. If they are identical, it's infinite solutions. If the linear terms are identical, but the constants are not, it's no solution. And that's going to lead us into what we're doing today. So close your spiral. Take out your workbook, find 4.9, and let's go through these examples together. Example 1 and example 2, it says for problems 1 and 2, use the equation provided to write an equation with the stated number of solutions. So I have my left side is 5x plus 1. And so my first column, I want to come up with the right side so that it's going to give me one solution. The middle column, I'm going to come up with the right side where it's going to give me infinite solutions. And the right column, I'm going to come up with something on the right side that's going to give me a no solution. So I just talked about this in the warm up. If I want only one solution, then I do not want my coefficient, the number in front of my x, to be the same. If the number in front of the x is different on both sides, it has to be one solution. So my example for this is going to be 5x plus 1 equals, I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to put it below. So I want an x to be different. So instead of 5x, I'm going to do, let's go 4x. It doesn't matter if the constant is different or not, as long as the linear term is different then the equation is going to have one solution. So I could put plus one if I wanted to, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to put minus three. Okay, so what I'm saying is it also could be 4x plus one. I could have the same constant, but I cannot have the same linear term, so I can't have 5x on both sides. For an infinite solution, I want it to look exactly the same. I want the left side to look exactly the same as the right side. So on the left side, I have 5x plus 1 already. So the right side, I want it to be the exact same. So I want the right side to also be 5x plus 1. For a no solution, I want the linear term to be the same, but I want the constant term to be different. So I already have 5x plus 1 on the left side. So for a no solution, I need to have 5x again. But I do not want to have a plus 1, because if I have a plus 1, that's identical. That's infinite solution. So I want something other than plus 1. So let's go minus 4. So look carefully at how they're written. If the linear terms, if the x's don't have the same number in front of them, that is going to be a 1 solution. If the left side is identical to the right side, that's 
infinite solutions. And if the linear term is the same on both sides, so if the X's are the same on both sides, but the constants are different, that is no solution. For example, number two, still in your chart, I can't answer anything with this problem until I do my distributive property first. So I want to see what the left side is equal to first before I do anything with the right side. So I've got distributive property right here. I have 2 times 4x, which is 8x, and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So the left side is 8x minus 6. I have to figure out what do I want a to be, which is the number in front of the x. And I have to figure out what I want b to be, which is the number behind the x. If this is my left side, if 8x minus 6 is my left side, and I want one solution, then I need to make sure that a is something other than 8. doesn't matter what it is. It just has to be something other than 8. So I'm going to say, let's make a equal to 6. Okay, Could have been 5, could have been 4, could have been 12, could have been a negative number. It just has to be something other than 8 because the linear terms must be different. And then for the constant, I could have negative 6 if I wanted to, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to do something other than that. So I'm just going to make up a number. I'm going to do a negative 10. Okay, A has to be something other than 8. B could be any number, it does not matter. That's going to give me one solution. If I want infinite solutions, then that means I want the left side to be identical to the right side. So the left side and the right side are the exact same. So if the 8 is in front of the X on the left side, then this A has to be an 8 so that they're identical. And if the B is a minus 6, then the B on this one where it says plus B plus a negative 6 is the same thing as minus 6. So I want B to be a negative 6. I want the left side to be identical to the right side. For a no solution, I want the linear term. So I want the number in front of the X to be identical, but I want the B, the constant term, to be different. So if the left side was 8x, then the right side needs to be 8x. So A is going to be 8. And then for B, I can choose any number that I want other than what is already there. I can't have it be negative 6. So let's change it up. Let's do a positive 12. Okay, could be anything other than negative 6 because I can't have it be identical. I need the x's to be identical. So the number in front of the x has to be identical, but the constant has to be something different. So moving on, let's look at example three. I have two people doing some work on the same problem. I have Sean and I have Logan. Sean's work is over here on the left. Logan's work is on the right. Notice that they both did distributive property first. And let's make sure they got the same answer. So I got a negative four times five X, which is negative 20 X and a negative 4 times negative 2, which is a positive 8, so it's a plus 8. So both Logan and Sean did that step correctly. Then let's look to see if they combine on the right side. It looks like they both try to combine like terms. So I've got a 2x and an 8x, and Sean said 2x plus 8x is 10x. And Logan said 2x plus 8x is also 10x. So up to this point, they have the exact same. And then it looks like they're both doing the exact same. They decided to get rid of plus 8, so they subtracted 8 from both sides, or they added a negative 8 to both sides. So now through that step, they still have the exact same. I'll underline in blue. So up to that point, they have the exact same work. So they are both correct. And then this is where we deviate. Uh, we need to get the X's to one side. 
So Sean said, I'm going to add 20x to both sides. If you add 20x to both sides on the left side, you get negative 20x plus 20x with zeros out. And then on the right side, 10 plus 20x equals 30x. I like that. Uh, for some reason, Logan decided to get rid of the X. So instead of getting rid of the X's from one side, he decided to divide everything by X. So when you do that, you're left with just constants. And so negative 20 equals 10, never. So he says no solution. So even though negative 20 does not equal 10, that would be a no solution. He did not solve the problem correctly. So we need to get x's to one side of the equation. Sean did that correctly. 0 equals, I'm going to write this to the outside, 0 equals 30x. They multiply by 1 30th. If it's a whole number, easier than Working with fractions, just divide both sides by 30. Dividing by 30 and multiplying by 1 30th are the exact same. Zero divided by any number is zero. So Sean is correct. Logan is incorrect. He was correct for a lot of it, but then he got wrong. Uh, the question says, Sean says there is only one solution, but Logan says there is no solution. Who is correct? And we know that Sean is correct. And we'll say you must get all of your variables to one side of the equation. So that answer is number three. Uh, that is it. So now we get to do our exit ticket. And then at the end, I'm actually going to go through your homework with you. So you're going to get into the practice problems. But let's do our exit ticket first. Our exit ticket says, use the equation provided to write an equation with the stated number of solutions. If I want only one solution, then I have to look at this if I want infinite solutions. But before I do anything, I need to do some distributive property. So this equation that we're working with, since we have 4 pushed together times the quantity x plus 3, we're going to do distributive property. So the left side is 4x plus 12 equals blank x plus blank. If I want a one solution, then I need to make sure I have something other than the number 4 in this box in front of the x. This linear term cannot be the same. So let's choose something as easy as 3. So we're going to say 4x plus 12 equals 3x. And then we could have plus 12. It doesn't matter, but let's change it up. Let's go minus 5. Okay, this right here, that number right there needs to be different from this number right here. That's how you're going to get one solution. Infinite, I want it to be identical. So if the left side is 4x plus 12, then I want the right side to be 4x plus 12. And for no solution, I want the linear term to be identical. But I do not want the constant term to be identical. So I do want 4x on the right side as well. But I do not want plus 12. I want anything other than plus 12. Let's go plus 10. Okay. One solution. Make sure your linear terms have different coefficients. The number in front of the x's are different. Infinite. Make sure they are identical. Everything is identical. No solution. Make sure the linear terms, the x's are the same. But the constants are different. Okay, moving forward, your homework, I built your homework tonight. So as I go through these practice problems, if you write these down and make sure you understand what we're doing when you apply this to your homework, that's going to open up at 2.50 this afternoon. You can take these answers from your practice workbook and you can plug them in and you should get a 10 out of 10. 
So looking at our homework from lesson 4.9, so find the practice pages, it'll say practice nine. And it says for number one, use the equation provided to write an equation with the stated number of solutions. So if I want only one solution, I already have negative two X plus one on the left side. I want a different number in front of the X on the right side. So let's do a three X. Doesn't matter what my constant term is. So for this one, you know what? I'll even do a plus one. So I have the same constant term, but I have a different linear term. So it's gonna be one solution. Infinite, I need it to look exact. So negative two X plus one on the left. So I need negative two X plus one on the right. No solution, I need the linear term to be exact. So I need negative two X to be on the right, but I do not want plus one. So let's go minus two. Doesn't matter what it is, just something different. For number two, use the equation provided to write an equation with the stated number of solutions. Notice they've now given us the right side. We have to figure out the X on the left side and the constant on the left side. So if I want one solution, I can't have a two X. So I can't have a two X. I need anything other than a two X. So let's do four X. Doesn't matter what it is. If you say I don't see anything on the right side, if you don't see anything, it's always plus zero, but I could choose any number that I want. Let's do a plus 10. 4x plus 10 equals 2x. These right here are different. That's why it's going to be one solution. Okay, the linear terms, the number in front of the variable, that determines whether it's going to be one solution or not. Infinite, I want it to be identical. So if the left side has to be exact to the right side, then the left side will be 2x plus zero. I sort of gave you a hint right there because there was nothing behind the 2x. So if you don't see anything behind the 2x, it's a zero. So left side is 2x plus zero, right side is 2x plus zero. For no solution, I want the x's to be the same. I want the linear term to be the same, but I can't have the constant the same. I'll do something as easy as this. Left side's gonna be 2x plus one. Right side's gonna be 2x plus zero. For number three, it says for problems three and four, state whether the given values of C and D create an equation with only one solution, infinite solutions, or no solutions. So it's giving us CX plus D. It's giving us values for C and D. When we plug those values in, we're gonna see what we get as far as one solution, infinite solutions, or no solutions. So the left side is always 5x plus 2. In A, it says C is 5, so I got 5x. It says D is also 5, so I plugged in 5 for C. I plugged in 5 for D. Left side is 5x plus 2. Right side is 5x plus 5. These are the same. My linear terms are the same, but my constants are not. Two does not ever equal five, so this would be a no solution. Same exact thing for letter B. They're giving us different values, though. So I still have 5x plus 2 on the left. Now they're telling us we're going to make C 5, but we're going to make D 2. Well, those are identical, so that would be infinite solutions. And then for letter C, left side is 5x plus 2. Right side, they say C is now going to be 2. And D is going to be 5. Here's where you train your eye. These are not the same. The X's are not the same. The coefficient on the left side is 5. Coefficient on the right side is 2. So the linear terms are not the same. So it is one solution. And for this one, it doesn't even ask us to solve what the solution is. So we're just going to write one solution. We get to do the exact same thing with number four. But before we do that, we have to do distributive property. So I'm going to do distributive property right here. Negative two times three X is negative six X. 
Negative 2 times negative 4 is a positive 8. Negative times a negative is a positive. Equals. They're telling us that C for the first one is negative 6. So negative 6x plus D. They're saying D is negative 4. Plus negative 4 is the same thing as minus 4. So on the left side, I have negative 6x plus 8. On the right, I have negative 6x minus 4. Linear terms are the same. Constants are different, so that's a no solution. I have negative 6 plus 8. I'm not going to keep doing the distributive property because I've already done it once. Now they want C to be negative 4, so negative 4C. And now they want D to be negative 6. I'm just going to go straight to minus 6 instead of plus negative 6. Looking here, my linear terms are not the same. One's a negative 6x, one's a negative 4x, so I already know it's one solution. And for the last one, I've got negative 6x plus 8 was already my answer on the left side. It says we want C to be negative 6. We want D to be 8. Look at those. Those are identical. So that means infinite solutions. The left side will always be equal to the right side. Number 5 says use the equation provided to write an equation with the stated number of solutions. So I have 3x minus 9, and I want to write an equation where I'm going to have one solution, infinite solutions, and no solutions. So I'm going to have 3x minus 9. So I need to figure out what I want c and d to be. I want c to be something other than 3x. So let's go 5x, and it doesn't matter what d is. I'll go minus 6. Infinite, I want them to be identical. So 3x minus 9 must equal 3x minus 9. So I want C, I guess if you want to run like this, I want C to be 3. I want D to be negative 9. No solution, I want the x's to be the same. So I want 3x minus 9 on the left. So I want a 3x on the right, but I don't want negative 9, so let's do a plus 2. So if we wanted to write it like this, we still want c to be 3. We want d to be something other than negative 9, so we did positive 2. For number 6, exact same problem, but we have to do distributive property first. So 3 times 4x is 12x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So for A, I want one solution. I want A to be something other than 12. So I'm going to say A is going to be 10. And I want B to be anything. It doesn't matter since A is already different. I'll make B. For this one, let's do the same B, negative 6. Infinite, I want them to be identical. So that means I want A to be 12. And I want B to be negative 6. There's A. There's B. For no solution, I want A to be the same. So I want A to be 12. I want B to be something other than negative 6. doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to choose 8. For our last set, says for problems 7 through 10, determine whether the equation has only one solution, infinite solutions, or no solution. Explain how you know how. And so I'm looking at this. Left side is not equal to the right side. The x's are not the same. So that is a one solution. It says explain. So we're going to say different, let's do this, different linear terms. So you could even say 5x and 2x. Those are your linear terms. Your x's are your linear terms. For number 8, 
Same thing. You have different linear terms, so this has to be a one solution. And different linear terms. And you could say 4x and 2x. For number 9, we have to do distributive property first. So I've got 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Notice I have the same linear terms, but I have different constants. So that is a no solution. And so our explanation is what I just said. Same linear terms. Different constants. And my guess would be the last one would be an infinite since we haven't done one of those. But let's just look. I have to combine some like terms here. So a negative 5x and a positive 3x is a negative 2x. So I've got 3 minus 2x. And then on the right side, I also get to combine like terms. If I don't see a number in front of the x, it's a 1. So on the right side, I have 3 and then negative 3x plus 1x. Combining that, it's negative 2x. You can see that they're identical. So that is infinite solutions. And our explanation is they are identical. Okay, so if you stayed with me through this entire video lesson, you should have all the tools you need. You should have all the answers you need for your homework. Your homework will open up tonight at 2.50, so you're dialed in for JAG time. Use all of these answers. You will find all of the questions on your homework are aligned to this. So if you have this down, you will get a 10 out of 10. Guys, have a great day. We will see you tomorrow.